EA Sports. We are moments away from what should be an excellent matchup between the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. I'll talk to you again at halftime, but for the call of this one, let's send it out to our EA Sports broadcast team. It's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, from the stadium that hosted Super Bowl 51 back in 2017, we are inside NRG Stadium in Houston. Today, it's a black and blue matchup in the NFC North between the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. Brandon Garden, Charles Davis, happy to be with you. And Charles, we've got two teams who know each other extremely well. These division games, they tend to be battles. People scout like crazy in this league but no one scouts more than within the division. Because if you win your division, you're automatically in the playoffs. That puts extra emphasis on these games, and they can't wait to get at each other. Kick this one away, and off it goes. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And out will come the leader of this offense, and that, of course, is their signal caller. And what's a quarterback's best friend? Balance? I think you're right. <laughs> I agree with you. You know, a lot of guys would say a great receiver, right? A terrific offensive line. But I agree with you. Balance. Because if you can run the ball effectively, that just opens things up for guys who want to throw it and gives you easier passing lanes and easier coverages to read. And they said balance will be a focus in this one. Yeah, they don't want it all just heaped on his shoulders, I don't believe. I think they want to make sure they take some of the pressure off. They'll come out throwing here on first down. He finds West. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards there. First down, Vikings. First down, Jim. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. He'll look to throw. Going for a right side here, complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. He's locked in early. Two nice first down completions to start. I like the fact that he's seeing the whole field early. Spreading it around a little bit in the early going. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll look to throw here. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Let's take a look here at the offense for Minnesota. So let's all work together on this one because it's natural to just watch the football. I want all of us to watch the center of this offensive line, the center and the two guards. They've got to be able to control the point of attack, and they didn't do such a good job on that last play. Plenty of opportunities to redeem themselves. They'll have to take advantage of that and start to make progress. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Second and 10. He's got a first down and then sub inside the 40. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. And he's taken down inside the 30. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is starting. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. From four yards out, as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. 
they went five wide in that offensive set. And racing, going three wide's a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Mike Zimmer's made the decision. His guys will go for two. Back to throw again. And his throw here is incomplete. So pretty interesting. They get the opening drive touchdown. They wanted a little more. They were looking for eight. Maybe something they thought about before the game started, I would imagine. I think you're right about that. That's discussed in your staff meeting. A decision is made. I think the head coach has to blueprint it and say, yes, let's go ahead and do that. In this case, though, let's give some credit to the guys on defense. They gave up the touchdown, but found a way to regroup and keep them out of the end zone for the two-point play. So they went for two and failed. They didn't use him on the PAT, but now he boots this one away with a 6-0 lead. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. And they'll be let out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. And what I'm looking for from him today, the things every quarterback is looking to do, lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing it, running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Six nothing, our score after one. with a second and five. Big stop, G. Big stop. Let's go. Let's go. Second and five. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Give him 18 on that play, and Green Bay has the first as well. And it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. remaining in this first half of football. We remind you that coming up in two minutes time, we'll hand you off to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Second and one. Firing quickly here and that's complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 31-yard line. First 
So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Touchdown, Packers! From six yards away, as his guys can now take the lead with the extra point. Walking into the stadium, we saw a ton of people donning the jerseys of this rookie quarterback, so you know they love that opening drive, and he throws a touchdown pass. He gave a little bit of confirmation about what they had hoped, right? Because they thought they had a quarterback. They're thinking they have a quarterback. You do this, they believe they've got a quarterback. Look up, elbowing each other up in the stands. That's our guy. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where and these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for, and this touchdown will count. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. They'll try and throw for it, and this is going to be hauled in. So they get the two-point conversion. And now they have an 8-6 lead. And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target, the tight end. I love how you described it because you know he's going to have some length and some catch radius as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. Ready, ready. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. <laughs> They'll look to throw. Finding green complete. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Give him 18 there and give the Vikings a first down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. has been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Back to throw now on second and 10. Green brings it in. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Well, 
the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. 56. Mike, 56. Head up. 56. Looking to throw. It's caught. Jones. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. As his guys are in for six. And the Vikings are going to retake the lead. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. So now, Charles, two touchdowns, two tries at two-point conversions, and both fail. And you want to say, let's go ahead and run the kicker out there from now on. But the problem is you're chasing points yeah. at this stage. So now you've got to dial up more two-point conversions and hope you're successful from here on out. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And you have to figure they won't just sit on the football here in the final minute. The way things have gone, they need to try to make something happen offensively. But maybe they should. Maybe they should sit on it here because of what you just said. They haven't made anything happen offensively. Getting ready to go into the half, give them a chance to take a deep breath, exhale a little bit, and start over. I don't know if this is the time to push it myself. Yeah, right now under 100 yards of total offense. They'll set up to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. He'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Back-to-back -to -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now back to throw. Rolling to his right. He's going to take off with it. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. But Charles, in the past, a lot of people called this offense one-dimensional. I think you did. Well, I think it was you. I'll be honest, I did. <laughs> I think the fan base is hoping with this young rookie that they can put some wrinkles in this offense like we just saw. I think you're exactly right because we did have that discussion that what we've seen in the past from them, they needed to broaden, and they have done it here. Look at what he's bringing to their offense. And now as a defensive coordinator, you've got some extra work to do to prepare for him and their offense. And now he'll tuck it and run. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. He'll drop to throw. 
And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. A great effort there in the final seconds of the first half. And the Packers have retaken the lead. Well, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but his top two options were not available on that throw, so he went the safe route, worked out pretty well. It was like you were in the pocket. How about you going through the progressions <laughs> like that? But a lot of offenses say, touchdown to check down. Look downfield first, bring it back to the line of scrimmage. Not easy for a rookie to do. Oftentimes they get one look and they make their decision off of that. He went through three. That was impressive. The Packers keeping the offense out there now as he'll go for two. They'll look to throw, and this will be caught as they convert here for two. So two successful two-point tries now for them. And you know what it does? It gives you a boost, a huge one for your team because, hey, you're dominating them now. They can't stop you either scoring touchdowns or two-point conversions, but how about the defense? You don't know what to do at this stage. You can't stop them in any direction. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one, go to the locker room, start over. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports halftime report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So it's the Packers set to receive the kick. They've got the lead as well as we are underway in the third quarter. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the end line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. They're going to look to throw. He sets the fire deep. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. That has not been the best game for him, but he definitely tried to get by with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big play. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete, but you're right. Hasn't been a better game here in the second half, just trying to get going. Big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. Now a man open down the middle of the field, and they're able to get this one across the 35. 
13 yards, first down Packers. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 41. They'll set up a throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. That throw good for four. It's second down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Second and six. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. From 13 yards out. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. And now once again, they'll line up to go for two. Again, he'll drop the throw. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. The third time wasn't a charm. They got the first two two-point tries. Still have the lead, but couldn't get the third. Okay, so they didn't get this one. But I have to ask you, what matchup are they seeing that they feel that confident to go for two so often? Yeah, and we talk about this a lot, but it has to be something, you're right, that they saw all week, correct? Definitely game plan for, felt good about being aggressive and going for it. And right up until that one, they had gotten two for two. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 right. to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Back to throw. And that's complete. It's green here. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do in that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. They'll look to throw here on first down. He's got green. 
He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. Let's go. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. as they are now just an extra point away from making this a three-point game. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? <laughs> you know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in the book. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. look but they found out it is a touchdown indeed the official says this one counts so now here are the Vikings faced with a big two-point conversion attempt back to throw again and they're gonna get the two it's caught and the lead is cut to two here in the fourth and, of course, on the two-point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver, ball's put on him, two points for them. Lead shaved to two now as the kickoff is away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts. So we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you got another thing coming. Yeah, and then, by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. It's a gain of 12, and the Packers have the first. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? Atlanta had the lead against New England, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half, to about the 39. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, Boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Here's second and eight. They'll roll him out right. And he's going to keep it here. 
And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Able to make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. They'll look to throw here. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. That one looks like his throw here. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. So here we go. The Packers will line up to go for two. They'll try and throw for it. He's got it. And they will not go quietly as we are back to a two-score game. So they try to make it a two-score game with a conversion. It pays off. And they've looked at the situation, figured it out well. A two-score game in this situation, they've got to feel much better about where they are. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. So all eyes on this Vikings offense. Down by 10. At time, a huge factor. They'll need a score here and also likely an onside kick recovery. But first things first. First and 10. Try and start this drive in the air. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Second and 10. Quick hitter here, it's complete. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Got it complete to West. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. Go, 
First down now, but that clock rolling. Back to throw here. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time to make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. He'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Tried to go for the big one there on second down. Now they're likely down to their final two plays. And you know they've got to keep going for the big shot, right? So defensively, you play what they call top down. Nothing behind you. Make everything get completed in front. go in the game, which means that this challenge was initiated by the fellows in New York. And if you're the coach, you're thinking, thank you, New York. So back-to-back -to -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Looking to throw. He finds West. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Ten yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. First down now, but the clock continues to move. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. it to Jones. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, Stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brad.